All right, what's up? We're back. New episode, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We're going to be covering episode two. Don't worry, it won't be for too long. Um, we just weren't able to do a review last week. Uh, and then we'll get right into episode three. Um, this is a spoiler review as usual. So if you haven't seen the episodes yet, click off, come back once you've seen them, uh, and we'll break it down. So Nick, let's get right into episode two. Um, and let's, let's highlight some of the stuff. Great action sequence on the bus, or not the bus, on top Rock. of the two trucks. Yeah. Um, I loved how that played out. The, the surprise of her being a super soldier for them, of course, we kind of already knew that. Mm. Um, or had an idea in the trailers and that sort of right. stuff. But what were your thoughts on the introduction of John Walker and Isaiah Brad? For John Walker, I'm intrigued i will it wasn't like a part of me is like i wish they did more but i'm also like there's three episodes left at this point maybe they'll um draw on that i'll, I'll like fully build out his character you know it's still early in the game to tell um and i mean i mean i was like i i thought the first like that intro sequence at the football stadium and like, you know, he's, he's doing the whole press circuit. He's doing the whole, like, they're, they're telling him as a, like a celebrity. I thought that was just really fascinating. Cause like, at least from my understanding of it, Cap got out of, Steve Rogers got out of the ice and like, nobody really made like, like he really like kept to himself. They didn't, it wasn't like a parade or anything, but here they're, they're treating this as like a really big, like, you know, they're hyping him up being press tours and everything's like very un-Captain America like, which I think was, was cool. I think Wyatt Russell is, um, I enjoy him. I wouldn't say I'm like one over or like I'm against him, um, but I, I, I enjoy him. He seems to have that like, um, like soldier focus, like capability. I, I did think the end of the episode when he was like, uh, just stay the hell out of my way. I was like, that's a bit harsh. Yeah. You just, you just, you just, you literally just showed up. If this happened like at episode three or episode four, I'd be like, okay. For his intro episode, I was a little, I remember being caught off guard by that because I was just, um, I would prefer if they built out the fact that he's like, oh, he's like, I'm just trying to help. I'm still a nice guy. And then slowly devolve into him being like more ruthless and more um, morally flexible, I guess. Um, other than that, um, I guess we'll just see where he goes. Just to give a little like um, forward to episode three, he seems to be right now just be like, oh, he's an opposing force. I'm hoping they do more than just, you know, he's a government stooge or whatever. I'm hoping they delve more into that. But um, again, there's three episodes left. As for yeah. Isaac Bradley, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. Yeah, I just want to touch on something with the Wyatt Russell. Mm -hmm. Dude's been getting death threats for playing yeah. a role. And, and I, I just have to say, like, come on. Like, like, like grow up, like get a life. If you don't like the character, that's one thing. But it, yeah. the the point of the character is that he's not a likable char character. It's, yeah, I mean, for every good thing that happens in in any fandom, there's always going to be that like, yeah, back. I'm like not defending it. I'm not like, not saying like, oh well, you know, it's going to happen. But it's it's like, man, like there's been so much like awful stuff that's like. Like this isn't new, I think is what I'm trying to say. Like all the way yeah. back to like Kelly Murray trans, it's like, oh my gosh, you know, you hope they'd learn and like, you'd hope there'd be some sort of like conversation about like, maybe we shouldn't send death threats to a guy literally doing his job. Like I didn't see anyone sending death threats to like, and it's like, well, it's like, why are you sending death threats? He's, he's, you know, that's the point of the character. He is supposed to be a replacement. Right. You're not supposed to be on board with him. I don't know. It's just like it's it's so like it's disappointing. So. Yeah, I, I I agree. But let's move on to Isaiah Bradley because I really liked Wyatt yeah. Russell playing um, a hole Captain America essentially. I like yeah. his inter introduction. I like that moment with um, I can't remember her name. Um, oh, same person who plays Empress Snaps. Yeah. But anyways, when when he's like that was a mistake. And she just like punts him off the or punches him off the truck. And I was like, oh, this dude is there's not he is not equipped to be Captain America. Yeah. But 
but let's move on into Isaiah Bradley. Um, because this, I think, was the best part of episode two. At least it was, it was my highlight. But Nick, what were your thoughts on that scene? I remember in speaking to episode two as a whole, I remember being like not really invested in what was happening until Isaiah Bradley showed up. And then, and then I was like, I was like, oh, okay. Now, like, I don't, I, I, I get it. I see where you're going with this. I just remember being like episode for the largest part of episode two. I was just like, I didn't care. Or like, I just wasn't like, I was just like, like unenthused. But it was when Isaiah Bradley showed up, I was like, okay, I can kind of see what you guys are going at here. Um, the one negative thing, I'll just get out of the way first. I kind of wish it wasn't a Bucky's like, I need you, I know a guy who knows a guy type thing. I thought that was like a bit, I don't know how else you would have like introduced him, but I wish it just wasn't like, you should meet someone and just, he has this back, he has like backstory, like just built into, into like the Winter Soldiers. I thought there could have been like, a different way to do it but um other than that i really enjoyed carl lumby's performance i'm interested to see the conversations like it starts for the show of like oh you know there was a black captain america that was like written out of history um has has feels like watchmen had a bit of an influence on it or at least carries same thematic ideas between the two shows so um interested to see how they like how Bradley's presence comes into play admits super soldiers Zemo Walker and just the Falcon the Winter Soldier but I'm definitely I'm definitely intrigued yeah I think it's really interesting because it it, it brings a whole new light on like this is something America covered up um and it, and it it's not a direct one for one but it's pretty close to I can't remember if it was in the 40s or the 50s. Um, you know, it's a lot, it's a big reason why African Americans don't want to get vaccinated right now. Is Tuskegee COVID. study? Is that right? right? Yes, yes. Because yeah, the Tuskegee study, I think I'm, yeah, I'm saying it. Tuskegee right. study? Something like that. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, where they essentially experiment. They were a, I, I don't even want, it, that's a whole essay of a conversation, right. but. Yeah. Essentially, America, um, I'm trying not to swear, effing over <laughs> African Americans. Um, yeah. And, and that character embodies that, right? Mm -hmm. um, he talks about being experimented on for 30 years in prison for 30 years for serving his country, right? All right. My, my biggest hope right now is that there's a flashback episode in play because I think it'd be. Like that, that's that that prospect of like seeing Bradley in action and then seeing the fallout. Like that's too rich. I feel to not visualize and bring to like. There's only so much. Like, I mean, Carl Lumby's a great actor. He was in um, the Justice League cartoon series and he was in Supergirl. Like, he's a great actor. I just feel like, you know, the classic show don't just tell. Even though he could probably tell it amazingly I'm, I'm hoping for like a flashback episode to see and i think it could play into bucky story really well um it just it's just too rich of a, go a story gold mine to like not touch on at some point yeah i i agree i think they missed their moment i think if they were going to do it that was the moment to do it hmm. um but i would love a series about isaiah bradley yeah uh, to be um, honest set back in the 40s or 50s that would be yeah. really cool and the winter soldier pops up Mm -hmm. um yeah i'm just hoping that like he was not there like i don't know just for the hell of it like and i'm not saying they did do that it's just there's a lot happening and like again um there's three episodes left i'm just hoping that he comes back in the conversation because I, I would i would love to see him re-enter the story and then just oh yeah this happened in the past yeah and i will say my most common critique is what we're talking about Mm -hmm. um show to not tell it's a big thing in storytelling yeah and i feel like they're struggling with that in this the first few episodes to be perfectly mm -hmm. honest yeah at the end they're like we're gonna go to zemo mm -hmm. you don't need to tell us that we already know he's like i know what you're thinking no he's like and then he says fine we'll do it cut there right he's just like well are we gonna see zemo maybe we're gonna see zemo 
right? It's one, it's something to talk about and two, it doesn't feel so on the nose. Yeah. And I guess that'd be a good segue to episode three. Cause I feel there are a few moments that in this episode, this week's episode that did the same thing. And it was just like, there's still a lot of like, I don't know, bringing characters into play and like explaining things. But um, I guess we'll, uh, we could segue to episode three now, if you want to. Yeah, let's, let's get into it. So we kind of pick up where we left off. They're going to see Zemo. Um, and of course, let me know if I'm missing out on anything earlier. Just feel free to pop in and cover because we just watched the episode. So I haven't seen it twice. So mm -hmm. it's not memorized, but they go, you know, Sebastian, Stan, um, the Winter Soldier, Bucky finally got to his real name. Um, <laughs> is like, I'll do this myself. He's not a big fan of the Avengers. Um, and walks in, and of course, the first thing Zemo does is he tries the code, and Bucky's like, that's not going to work anymore. And he's like, I figured. Um, makes sense. Of course, he, you know, the second he's there, he's like, oh, he wouldn't come here if he, he knew. he's too smart for that. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically have the, I have something you need, you know, he's like, I'm not going to help you, you know, like whatever Zemo has his Zemo speech. And yeah. then he's like, there are super soldiers. And he is like, like, he's ticked off. He's like, no, no, I, no, this is not allowed. This cannot right. be a thing. Um, and that plays into later in the episode, but now we got the ball rolling. So Bucky walks out and he's talking to um, Sam and he's like, what if we did this? And he breaks down the, the plan of how they would possibly break Zemo out. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, I guess they're breaking Zemo out of prison um, in a way that they're not going to be found guilty, essentially, of doing it. Yeah. And I, I thought that whole sequence was hilarious um, of Sam being like, no, we're not doing that. And then Zemo just walks in. And he's like, he just gives Bucky that look. And I, I was laugh, chuckling in that moment. But what were your thoughts of that whole opening? I I wish they it wasn't. I wish they actually, like, I don't know. I wish they went, like, a, a path where, like, Sam went, like, fine, we'll do it. And you actually see the execution. I just, I, just, I mean, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker for good heist planning, like, you know, Ocean's Eleven type things. And so when it was just, like, so when I realized, I'm like, oh, the plan already happened. It's kind of like, oh, <laughs> like I wanted to see the whole, I don't know. Cause I thought I was like, oh, the episode's going to be breaking Zemo out of prison. And then it like got solved and I was like, oh, okay, guess not. Yeah. Um, I thought it was, it was entertaining though. And the one thing I'll like, I'll, I'll say, I mean, like it got, again, it got the ball rolling cause there's so much like other stuff happening. Um, it was, it was an entertaining sequence. Just, so just personal preference. I just wanted a whole like, like them having to like break him out and have to like go through the whole like planning and um, set up sequences. I'm, I'm always the, a big sucker for those. Yeah, I, I, I actually disagree. I think just from a pacing perspective and probably from a budget perspective too. Just what was better. Yeah, and it would have been one, there are already two good action set pieces in this episode, right? Two? Two, yeah. I think they're two, yeah. Um, and I, I think it would have kind of taken away mm -hmm. or it, it would have felt a little too action. It's like, we don't, we don't need this. Yeah. Admits um, the other stuff in the episode. It makes sense the way they went. Yeah. It's interesting though, how Zemo is just in Berlin, right? Mm -hmm. He's no longer, um, on the raft, which is one of my biggest questions still that they haven't addressed. When mm -hmm. the snap happened, those villains were on the raft. Half of those guards probably disappeared. I mean, I know they're in the middle of nowhere, literally on a raft, but mm -hmm. did they escape what happened? Apparently Zemo didn't, if some others did. Right, I, story for another time, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. We're not yeah. gonna get an answer type thing. No, they're definitely not giving us an answer on that, but how, how Zemo got to Berlin, I would be curious. Mm -hmm, for sure. Um, but anyways, we move on. Um, Zemo kind of feels like Bruce Wayne. They're like, how are we going to get there? And Zemo's like, I'm rich. <laughs> yeah. um, I will say this, Daniel, 
Daniel Bruhl is really good. <laughs> Daniel Bruhl is just like really good at what he does. Um, I watch him on, well, he was in Inglorious Bastards. I watch him in The Alienist, um, underrated show. By the way, I recommend everyone check that out. Um, but I was watching, I was like, I um, never felt strongly one way or another about Zemo before in like Civil War. But here I was like, oh, you're like, I, li I like this whole like, he he's a soldier but he's also like he's like a smooth talking criminal who's got all these crazy connections and like i really enjoyed the way they just brought him along and i, I definitely love that they they're they're keeping him around i thought for sure he was going to betray the two of them and he'd be an x factor for like the rest of the show but i like that it's still kind of this trio at least for one more episode yeah, I'll be curious how that ends up, whether Zemo literally ends up back in jail or he escapes. Mm -hmm. And if he escapes, does he come back in the series or is that a setup for something else? Right. Um, also, I, I guess the mask isn't a Thanos thing. I know we said that at one point. So um, bummed. I don't know. I was like, I either one way or another, I was just like, it's unless there's going to be like greater re revealance later, relevance late, later revealed. I'm like, it's just a, it's a ski mask and, um, mm -hmm. you know, it didn't have to be anything more than it's just, oh, you know, it's his comic book look. So I wasn't, oh, yeah. I wasn't all that like torn up. It, it still makes, it still flow. It still makes sense. It still flows. Oh yeah. No, no, no. It makes complete story sense. I don't have a problem with it. It's mm -hmm. just from like, you know, you know, a theory that like, it doesn't really matter if it's true or not. It's just kind of fun. I was like, right. that would have been a really cool little detail. Mm -hmm. but it's not a big deal at all in the scheme of the story I got they get on the private jet they're going to um oh my gosh marpan i can't help you out on this one because i'm trying yeah. to remember it but i'm like and i could see it in the word in my head but i i can't i can't pronounce it um are you checking it <laughs> I'm going to look it up, but what were your thoughts on yeah. that whole sequence where they go in the bar, you know, they have to walk up to the bar and basically are undercover and Zemo's like weird sense of humor slash wokeness. Are we talking just the bar or also the meeting at the, at the, uh, after like with the, what's her name? Are we Let's go with both. Both. Okay. I like the whole, like, uh, you know, sort of James Bond, like, oh, you have to, you have to go to a club and we have to like hang out with the criminals and maintain a cover. Um, I do like the gag of like uh, the usual. He's like, yeah, and he like cuts open a snake. I'm like, oh man, that is the worst. <laughs> that is awful. Um, I'm, I'm definitely interested, I'm definitely way more interested in Bucky's storyline now that Zemo's here, especially, and I realized that after that fight scene, I'm like, oh, like, he doesn't he doesn't have like physical like he, the book doesn't work on him anymore but he still has to like play along with Zemo and I'm like I'll be interested to see what Zemo can like brings out in Bucky and um yeah I don't know I just realized with that like one fight scene I was like oh okay that's he's still like it's it's bothering Bucky that he's the guy's still here and then as for the criminal meeting um I I, I was a little like it reminded me how kind of superfluous, at least right now, Falcon's family is. But I was like, for the sake of the whole, like, oh, he has to like BS his way through the conversation. I thought that's a good, uh, it's good enough tension setup. Very classic, um, very classic move to like just get into the action. Um, yeah, yeah. That's really in general thoughts. Yeah. So it was Madripoor. That's where they were. Okay. <laughs> um, I love Zemo's sense of humor. One when they're talking about Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Um, and the plane. And Bucky was like, oh, it was good. And it's like, it, it sounded like it was good. And then Daniel Brule just has this whole like art, the music yeah. student breakdown of it. Mm -hmm. um, and I was like, that's weird. <laughs> and, yeah. then, and then he has another one later on. I was like, oh, was it the uh, he was yeah. an interesting dude? It was like, only an American would think of yeah like, forward black man would look like a pimp and i was like it's like huh <laughs> i feel like they're kind of doing what wandavision did where it's like we have this character in a basic outline but like now we're gonna fill in fill in like the blanks like 
and I was like, okay, like I guess now he's all of a sudden now he's rich. Now he's um now he's like this cultured being, which I'm like, Daniel Bruhl seems to be enjoying himself and he's like, yeah. It just it just it just also makes him different counterpart to Sam and Bucky. Mm-hmm. I love that whole drink thing with uh hey. Sam. I yeah. thought that was really fun. Mm-hmm. But I thought what was even better was the fight where you know Zemo's like you're gonna have to act like the winter soldier. Mm-hmm. Um and that's a big character moment for Sam, uh, sorry, for Bucky. Um, because you know he's he's beating the living day out of a whole bunch of people. Right. And then there's this moment at the end where it's like, all right, we're good. You guys can go into the meeting. And Zima walks by and Sam puts his like hand on his shoulder. And it, it's this small little moment where he's like, are you okay? Yeah. And I'm like, those are the moments that these shows need, right? And like, that's striking the bond. And that's why I was like, oh, after that fight, I was like, now I'm actually kind of like invested in seeing what happens with Bucky because like Zemo is acting as this like he's bringing something out or you seeing that's the way they're positioning him so um yeah definitely an interesting series of events just those two um parts I guess of the episode yeah and and then they get to that scene like you were saying and it the phone call just like classic trope yeah mm-hmm. um and Sam plays it pretty well. He plays it as well as he can. It's kind of hilarious. He's like, yeah, I'm going to kill that thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, he is so screwed. And he's almost there. And then she just says, Sam, as the last word. I'm like, oh, you were so close. So close. Um, and then Sharon Carter's introduced, which I, I knew it was Sharon Carter from the scene before mm-hmm. um, at the bar when she like turns away wearing the hoodie. I was like, oh, the Sharon Carter's there. Yeah, I, I noticed it was the same outfit from the trip. Was it the same? It was a similar outfit from the trip. Similar, yeah, whichever it was. Yeah. And I was like, all right, well, there she is. Um, she, I think she shoots the person. I think so. Um, um, at least my, that was my that was the one weird part when like everything turns into like John Wick three and like everyone's hunting them. I I clearly remember some a sniper taking them out, but then all of a sudden she's on the ground. And I was like, wait, what? And I was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe I just mis- like misunderstood um, what was happening. But um, yeah, she's the one who, who shot, who, who saved them in the end. Yeah, yeah. And we go from there, you know, they go back to her place. Apparently, you know, she's been stuck with the courts. Another tell not show, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, I kind of can figure what's been going on. But then they give her this really rich, she lives in this really wealthy place. And I'm like, oh, interesting. Um, these famous paintings that apparently the fakes are in museums. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is cool. But like, I don't know if this makes sense for Sharon Carter's character. And, and we'll, we'll break this down because this will be an important thing right. for the end of the episode. Mm-hmm. So we'll wait till the end to touch on the full thing. Um, and there's a moment with Anthony Mackie where it kind of feels like she, there's almost like a... They had some sort of relationship undertone between Sharon Carter and Anthony Mackie. I don't know if it was just me that picked up on it that it was a little weird, but I'll say I'm not saying I necessarily disagree or necessarily agree. I'm just like I'm like I probably just have to rewatch it. I know for me, I was just like, you know, they've only shared so many scenes together. Was, Steve was always the the go between, um, although. I wouldn't mind rewatching it to, to pick to see pick up on that. For me, it was just like a coworker like transaction type thing. The whole mm-hmm. like I won't I won't like make like let's make a deal and like solidify this. Like I saw it as that, but um, not yeah. saying it wrong. But um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, it could be. <laughs> it could be. Um, yeah, it was a small moment, and it was kind of a. It wasn't an overt sort of thing. I was like. Oh, that's a little weird. What is that? Like it was hinting at something. I couldn't tell what it was hinting at. Um, Or maybe it was a sort of reference to maybe Steve. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But anyways, they make the deal. You know, you get me to this guy. I'll get you your pardon, though. I don't know if Sam's going to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And they go to this location. They find the doctor. They're interrogating them. Meanwhile, Sharon Carter is kicking ass outside. Yeah. You know, that, that, that sequence where she has the baton and she's fighting three different people. One 
I don't get why she doesn't have a gun. She definitely had guns before, so like, <laughs> why is she using a baton? But it looked really cool. I'll say that. It's the classic action movies trade off where you're like, you definitely should just, you definitely have like, I don't know, a rocket launcher, but they decide to go in fists blazing, and you're like, you know what? Looks cool. <laughs> Won't well, can't complain. Yeah. Um, but yes, that that whole, and it's funny. I part of me understands why they would like cut back and forth just to increase tension but i'm like i really wish they didn't cut because i'm like just the idea of her going through like the boxes that little maze and just like tearing like tearing up the assassins i was like that's really cool that's like that was awesome yeah. that's probably um that was shot really really well that was that jason Bourne energy they're trying to chase in a way this whole show yeah i, I agree and then inside the container we found we find out that this doctor had manufactured 20, what is it, 20, 20 things of the serum? Yeah. Um, and I couldn't tell if that was, in, I think it was not including the already eight super soldiers. I interpreted it as it, it did include it because um, Enfys Nest, sorry, that's not her name. From, oh, Carly, that's her name from this show. Yeah. Carly says like, the, both Carly and the scientists like make reference to the fact that she stole. I understood that she stole everything, and then she, she and seven others shot themselves up with it. So I, I don't know. I interpreted it as the twenty, and then the flag smasher, smashers are like under that, under that twenty. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. That's the way I saw it. <laughs> I, Interesting. I'll have to look back at that moment because I, I'm not sure to be perfectly honest. But anyways, you know, we find out that it's the, oh my gosh, blanking on names of characters today. The Which power, one? the power, bro power, broker. The power broker, terrible name. <laughs> I, I, I'm just like, that's a, that's a just it's a terrible one, name to have. If, it's, if they're going with the whole, like he grants powers, it's going to be one of those classic, like on the nose comic book, like, there's no subtlety there. Um, uh, yeah, but yeah, the power broker, <laughs> that's the man. But the name's besides the point. Um, yes. And then essentially Zemo, Zemo just shoots the guy. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, of course Zemo would do that. That is the most Zemo thing to do. Yeah. Um, and then they, they get shot, the rocket launcher, they somehow know exactly what tube they're in. Yeah. Convenient? I say so. Um, though I wonder if that is the, yet again, forgetting his name, uh, the power. Power broker. Power broker. It's such a terrible name. I'm not going to be able to remember it. It's not cool enough. Come on, Marvel. You can come up with a better retcon name. Um, but the power broker, I wonder if those are the power broker's men and that's how they knew where the dude was. Mm -hmm. But it, it, it's weird that it played out that way. Um, I don't know this this whole story angle just feels kind of not that interesting it just feels like here's here's like my thing this is six six episodes all of them roughly 50 to an hour 50 minutes to an hour long and they it feels like they just finished act one and there's mm -hmm. three episodes left you know they have this power broker angle they have the flag smashers, which I want to. Uh, I want to. We still need to talk about. There's still Isaiah Bradley. There's John Walker investigating the flag smashers, and then who's going to get the shield? We know Zemo is going to probably pull some crap. And like, um, I don't remember the exact Dora Milaje agent's name, but she shows up. That's definitely going to be a thing for an episode. Right. And, oh, and Sharon Carter might be hiding something? Question mark. Is there's like, has a lot of ground to cover in three hours. I mean, you know. Um, and a lot of it is like been built on like reveal of secrets. And I'm just like, Ooh, that's a, maybe they could have done with like seven, seven episodes. <laughs> yeah. They're playing a dangerous space. game there. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just hoping that like, you know, WandaVision nine episodes safely saying it, it all like went, went well, everything got answered. I'm like, there's three hours left and you have like 10 different plot lines side up i'm exaggerating of course but um i'll be interested just how it all somehow manages to get wrapped up and whatever it's so there's a lot a lot of ground to cover i i completely agree 
Um, but let's get into that next action sequence that comes after, you know, Sam's yelling at Bucky, it's from every action movie. And it's like, of course, Bucky hasn't seen every action movie. He missed like 70 years. How is he supposed to know that? But it's like, uh, that was hilarious. But we get Zemo, you know, and I'm like, oh, he's, he's, he's just going to escape since he, you see him run out in the fire. Yeah. But he doesn't. He flanks around them and then hits a gas line and then just blows up a ton of them. And we see Zemo in action. We're like, this dude can kill some people. Like yep. he, he it really is special forces to the level we yeah. didn't. It was kind of off screen in Civil War. Yeah, he is a true, he's a true James Bond, Batman, Jason Bourne. Like he could, he could talk his way out. He could strategize, but he can also now. I'm happy to see that we saw him kicking ass, with especially with the mask on. It didn't make sense for him to put the mask on, I guess, in the moment. But I was like, that's awesome. That looks great. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Um, but and, yeah yeah and then he pulls out the car some nice car that he's boosted mm -hmm. or, and he's like all right get in and Sharon's like I'm not uh, you guys go get me my part in mm -hmm. they drive off and Sharon has a van waiting for her and it's like we have a major problem here yeah is she working for sword is she working for the power broker? Like, what what is going on? Well, like, um, well, one just to jump back to Zemo quickly. Again, I'm glad that they didn't just cut him loose after this episode. He's still it's still the three of them. Like, I love I really do enjoy that dynamic. As for Carter, I'm waiting for her to be. I'm waiting for her to be revealed as the power broker. <laughs> like, at this point, if that's like you know, consolidate two storylines into one, but um. I, I have no I have no idea. I think a flashback either in this episode or in the upcoming episodes would have been great to like just build out that aspect of her, just like um, explaining where she is because again it, it was a bit of a show instead of they were they were telling instead of showing. Yeah. So now we're like we don't really know where she she's an art dealer illegal art dealer but now apparently she's higher up. Right. Um, I'm, I'm curious to see which, like, why is there a problem? Is it because the science is dead? Is it because the foul of oh, not foul? Is is it because Zemo's out out free again? Um, I'm trying to figure out like what, how does any of this actually impact back on her? Um, mm -hmm. But again, more more secrets. Right. It's then. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I do not know. I'm not going to pretend to know because I have zero idea what it is. Yeah. Is she the power broker? Maybe. Does she work for Sword? Maybe. Who knows? Nobody. Yeah, it's. Yeah. Yeah. But we go on, we get the John Walker scene. Um, and I'm trying to figure out what else there is. They, they flag, oh, smash. the flag smashers. Um, is that right that there, smart? I guess. It's that, that right there is a sign that like about how they, I don't know, at least for us, like how they've been, been received because like the fact that like they're the big bads always thus far and they're like the eighth most important person in this in this episode. Um, I, there's a lot of intrigue with that group, but I feel like we've gotten, we've gotten like only 5% of like time with them, 5% of like what's actually going on with them. What we've gotten is like vague comments and vague like manifesto like the whole like um like uh, what, what what was she saying at one point she's like i have maybe you'll be a teacher after we we we, we finish this i'm like what are you guys trying to do <laughs> are you guys providing stuff to refugees like she she straight up kills everyone at the end i'm like i don't know right. what you guys like what are you guys doing I, I, I don't know what you guys are up to right and and that's what makes things confusing and, and Marvel is running into the same problem it could and kind of had with WandaVision mm -hmm. um, where it sets these expectations over a long amount of time mm -hmm. and you don't just have to stick the landing you have to perfectly stick the landing and then do a couple flips right yeah. just to make sure you get that perfect 10 mm -hmm. because the setup is, is it's really a lot and I think with this show in particular it's really asking a, a lot of its audience um, 
because for me personally, and the flag smashers are cool. We don't necessarily know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's shown off camera, obviously safe budget doesn't need to be shown on camera. Yeah. Um, but I'm just like, I'm not invested. I need to know exactly why. If we if we had a clear reason exactly why, then I'd be like, you know what? The, Sam and Bucky don't need to know that, but we yeah. can know that. Right. We can know an extent of it. We don't know yeah. an, even an extent of it. And like it was, it was okay holding on to Agatha for one vision. I don't think I think we both said we don't think they should have held on to her secret for so long. But it was like that was the point of the show. It was a mystery. But here I'm like, it's a classic, uh, what's a good movie reference? The Fugitive with Harrison Ford, you have like, you know, the, you have someone chasing the other and you need to know what the other party is like, but it seems thus far they're like, we're worried about the second and third and fourth parties, you know, that um, matters. I feel like if there was just Bucky, Sam, John Walker uh, and the Flag Smashers, it would just, Bring it all together um this power broker angle is just gonna like bother me till the see until the, until the series finale i'm like oh okay so that's if i'm if they pull it off and i'm like oh, okay so i guess that makes sense yeah. but um like right now i'm like why is this a concern why is like now all of a sudden sharon carter is like a criminal got her own enterprise i guess i'm just like there's so much time dedicated to not your big bads um I don't know. And I feel like they're interesting. I feel like the idea is like interesting and they're like, we're just trying to help people. I'm like, well, you, there's, there's nothing, you've done nothing so far that I've seen. It's just been a lot of talking or, you know, whatnot. So I don't know. I'm telling you flashbacks in this show in particular would help so much in just explaining mm -hmm. certain stuff and just showing stuff. Yeah. I, I will say, oh, going to overall thoughts, because I think we've kind of hit everything on this episode. Um, the show that we were kind of, we were kind of promised the idea of the show's Falcon wrestling with the mantle of being Captain America, or if he wants to be Captain America or not. Right. And I feel like that isn't the forefront of the show that it, I feel like it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Um. And whether that was a fault of the marketing material or not is a question of itself as opposed to the show. Mm -hmm. But I feel like through these episodes, I'm not seeing Sam struggle enough of picking up the shield. Yeah, like um, it's happened in like moments, like episode two. Um, the therapy scene, like when when Buck, when they stop like dicking around with each other, Bucky finally like straight up tells him like, "You like, you failed. You failed." He doesn't say exactly that, but he's like, "You failed, Steve. You, like, you know, he he trusted you." And I was like, "Okay, that like that's that's good. That's like what should be the focus." And like, I really did enjoy episode three. I think it was fun. I think it was action packed. But it's just like, there's so much happening, and it feels like especially it feels like Sam's getting dragged along, even though yeah. he's supposed to be in, in essence, the main character, it, especially in this episode, it feels like Bucky's calling all the shots and you know, I don't think they're going to make him Captain America. Cause that's the whole, the whole arc is with, you know, he, Steve gave Sam the shield. So um, I don't know, I guess we'll see, but again, they have three hours left. That's, right. that's a lot of ground to cover. Um, I think, I they, mean, yeah, oh, you go, I'm sorry. There's just one thing that in particular I want to touch on, and it's in this episode where Sam's like, maybe I should have destroyed the shield. Yeah. And then Bucky's like, I would take the shield before that would happen. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's such an interesting moment because it gives an idea of where they both stand. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, and it says something about Bucky that like, even I would take the shield before it. I let that happen right. so it's like reflective of still how he views himself but also how important he views the mantle and how important that is to him and yeah. i'm like oh that's an interesting moment could we explore that mo more no we have to get somewhere else we have yeah. to get to villain number four yeah exactly like it's like and just so much 
has been happening that's not been that arc like that by the point by the time like carly like kills all those people it's supposed to it, it's supposed to feel like it's like oh my gosh how horrific but i was like i like that's like again that's like the eighth most important thing that's happened in this episode her right healing uh, an intention to kill or whatever i'm like it's I, again i think Wa walker sam bucky carly that should have been the core four as much as i love daniel bull as zemo now as cool as it was to see um emily van i think yeah emily van camp as a sharon like those four should have been just the focus and like Sam and Bucky playing off Walker in pursuit of Carly. Like that's where it should be going. And now, now, you know, Wakanda's entered the picture, which yeah, is cool. I'm not, you know, I think it'll be definitely be interesting. I'm just like, oh my gosh, <laughs> there's that's definitely gonna eat up at least a half hour from again, your three remaining hours to tie up everything. Right. Yeah. Right. Interesting. I interesting <laughs> I don't know, man. It, it's, you know, that moment where we have one of the Dora Milaje, um, I think we saw her in Civil War last time. Yeah. Um, I was like, oh, that's cool. Shouldn't that be Nakia? And I was like, oh, probably budget. Lupita Nyong'o was probably too expensive for the show for a small yeah. role. Right. Or what's, um, what could have been Okoye, but yeah, I guess it just it makes sense. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, it'll be interesting to it'll be interesting to see. It's um, I again like you. I have no idea where this thing is going. They're not. The show is definitely. I feel like a little less more predictable than Wandavision because it's like. I don't know. Like Wandavision had one central mystery, but like here, there's like five plot lines. That's like I don't know where what intersects with what. Um, yeah. So. I'll give it that. I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> I don't know yeah, how. I, I don't either. I, I got to be honest, though, as we wrap this up. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the show. Like right now, I'm like barely positive on the show. It, And like, I think it's just a matter of like. It's like this is the third episode. We're at the halfway point and they just finished act one. And I feel like either you have, and either that means you have too much going on, or it just feels like it feels like it feels like the focus is like all over. It's like, are you gonna like they have Isaiah Bradley instead? It's like their race commentary. There's there's Sam with his like reckoning about this. You got a whole like um, I don't know what the uh, Black Smashers aren't really terrorists or whatnot, but like you got this whole other group. You got like five. I don't know. It's it feels like the focus is just all over. And yeah, there's not one thing to attach to, like, you know, not again, not to compare it to WandaVision because they are two very different shows. At least I was like, there's Wanda, there's Vision. That's the thorough line. But um, yeah. even here, the, t the titular duo, it feels like, I don't know, feels they're focusing more on banter sometimes than the actual yeah. stuff. I guess we'll see. I will, I'll continue to hold out hope, but, um, you know, it's amazing. I'm really amazed that they, they were like, six episodes is good. I'm like, I would have pushed for seven at least. Yeah. <laughs> WandaVision went for nine and their episodes were like half an hour barely. So like, you know, just go, go for the extra hour, <laughs> race that extra hour. Yeah, I, we'll see. Maybe the second half is really great and maybe the setup will be worth it. Um, but only time will tell. Yeah. But for now, Go ahead. Did you have something to say before you? I was just going to say six episodes is starting to look like some sort of weird death sentence. Cause like, I know you enjoyed game of Thrones season eight, but I'm like, there's some, maybe six episodes is not an ideal thing unless it's a real good solid, like <laughs> mini series or something. I'm like, if not, then just push for seven, push for eight or whatever. That seems to be an ideal right. amount or yeah. yeah. I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say the episode count to me really matters. I think it's more of just the way that the story is told. Right yeah, that's um, fair. And I think they just need to work. And, you know, it, it's not perfect. It, it's far from it, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. But and it's it's still, as an episode on its own, I liked it a lot. I liked the action and the new characters. Right. But in the grand yeah. picture, it just leaves more unanswered questions that aren't like, ooh, what's coming next? You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like, where is this going? 
Right, right. But with that, that wraps up our review of episodes two and three of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Let us know what you guys thought in the comment section down below. Who do you think Sharon Carter is playing? Like, what is this other role that she has? Does she work for the power broker? Is she the power broker? Is she working for some other organization like SWORD? Um, what do you think is up with that character? Let us know in the comment section down below. What's going to happen with Wakanda? Let us know that too. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video, and we'll see you next time. Peace out.